This is the first of the 3.1 videos. And we're gonna look at how two quantitative variables relate together instead of categorical now. And so in order to do that, we have to be able to identify which variable is the explanatory and which one is the response variable. And it's really quite simple. I'm sure you've done it before. You may have heard of the dependent and independent variable. Well, the response variable is going to be your Y variable. Your explanatory is going to be your X variable. And the X explanatory is one way to help remember that. The response variable responds to the explanatory variable. And the explanatory variable explains the response that there will be. It's the way I like to remember it. So let's, let's look at three examples and identify the explanatory and response variables from these scenarios. So a researcher wishes to determine whether the rate of water flow over an experimental soil bed can predict, can be used to predict the amount of soil washed away. So which one is responding? Um, the amount of soil being washed away is responding to the rate of the water flow. Let's take a look at the second example, a study of the effects of television on child development measured how many hours of television each of 125 grade school children watched per week during a school year and each child's reading score. So in this case, they're saying that the, uh, the amount of television watched or hours of television watched will explain how well they do on their reading score. So the reading score is the response, hours of television is the explanatory. Finally, you have data from many families on their parents' income and the years of education their eldest child completes. Your initial examination of the data indicates that the children were from wealthier families tend to go to school longer. <clears throat> so in this case, they're predicting how long the ch children go to school based on the parents' income. So their parents' income explains how long their children have gone to school. So for these three examples, it was clear which one they've identified, which one they want or they think should be the explanatory, the response. But I wanna make sure we, we mention that sometimes it's not clearly um, identified which one is which. Sometimes they're just looking to see if there's a relationship between two variables and they don't specify which one is influencing the other, which one is responding. So sometimes we can't actually say which one is going to be the explanatory and response. For the next two standards and the last two standards of this video, I wanna learn how to make a scatter plot and I wanna teach you how to describe the scatter plot. What's important for describing the scatter plot? So here I have um, the, the table for the Premier League from the 2019, 2020 season. So I have the team, the number of goals that they scored. So goals four number of goals that were scored against them, so goals against, and I have their total number of wins. So to make a scatter plot, the first thing we have to make sure aware of is scatter plots can only show two quantitative variables. Fortunately, I only have quantitative variables here, so I can make a scatter plot. And I have to pick what my explanatory or my response variables are gonna be. So for my first graph I've shown here, I have picked my explanatory variable to be the amount of goals for, and it's going to explain the number of wins that the team has. And so you can see this dot right here is going to be the team. It's gonna represent a team that scored 102 goals, and they had 25, 26 wins. You can see here is Manchester City. They had 102 goals and 26 wins. So each dot represents a team and each dot is a, a, an ordered pair. So how do I describe this distribution or this scatter plot? The things that we definitely need to say are the direction, positive or negative. In this case, it's positive because as the number of goals increase, the number of wins increase. So it's positive. Strength, 
we really have four options for strength right now. Is it weak? Is it moderately weak? Is it moderately strong or is it strong? In this case, I would say this is, um, this is a pretty strong, it's a strong relationship because they are tightly clustered together. We'll learn more about that soon. The form, this looks like it's a linear relationship. It's either gonna be linear or it could look curved. So you could say it's a curved relationship. And then on t if, if after you've mentioned these three things, you can add in if there are any outliers or if there are any specific clusters or gaps in the data. So here it looks like I have maybe two outliers and there is a gap between 60 or 70 to 82 it looks like. So let's look at two different variables. Now I've made my explanatory variable goals against and the response wins. So we should see a negative relationship because the more goals a team gives up, the less wins they have. And you can see that's exactly what happens here. The more goals against a team has, then the fewer wins they, they will have. So describing this relationship, this one appears to be negative is the direction. The strength looks moderately strong. The uh, form, this one actually looks like it might be a little bit curved. So it'd be hard to say that this one's linear. And then, uh, are there any outliers? It looks like there could be maybe one outlier here, possibly two. Uh, looks like the main cluster is between five and 20. And a gap between 20 to 25 or 21 to 26. So I want you to go ahead, pause the video and see if you can explain or describe this scatter plot that you see here, if it matches up with, the, with what I write out. So you can see I've underlined the necessities, the direction, form, and strength. Strength, mildly strong, direction, negative, form, curved, because you can see it doesn't appear to be linear, definitely looks to be curved. There seems to be two distinct clusters, one low, one, one group here, one group here. Maybe they mentioned the gap at around 30. And then these two um, possible low outliers. So when we're describing the negative relationship, we could say that as the percent of, of students taking the SAT increases, the mean math score decreases. That's what that negative relationship means. And these two are outliers because the mean math score the mean math scores are lower for their ex, for their the percent taking the SAT. They're lower than expected. In the next video, we'll talk about uh, a better measurement for the strength of a scatter plot.